All right. Hello, everybody. It is Dr. Petrie here, and today we are going to talk about the contributions of the ancient Rome, the ancient Roman people. Uh, today's lecture is section two, chapter one in your textbook. You can follow along in your textbook from pages uh, 20 to 27. It's a relatively short chapter this week, so hopefully I won't take up the entire 15 minutes. Uh, you can see from this map, this is what's called the Etruscan um, territory. This was the people who took over Italy and Tuscany uh, in uh, the Greek Empire uh, before the Romans actually took it over. And in the next page will begin. You can see that the Etruscans are driven out of Rome around 509 BC. Uh, the Romans, the conquering Romans, set up a new government called a Republic. And the Romans thought that a Republic would keep any one individual from gaining too much power. So they created a class of 300 members for the Republic Senate. And these are all patricians. These people are all the landholding upper class. And of course, these senators also serve for life and they make all of the laws for the Romans. So each year the senators elect two consuls from among the patricians. These consuls supervise the business of government and command Rome's armies. In the event of war, the Senate might choose a dictator to temporarily take control over the government. The common people were called plebeians, and these plebeians made up the bulk of the Roman population. In time, the plebeians grow to get some influence over government. They get the laws to be written down in what's called the Twelve Tables. They also gain the right to elect their own officials, which are called tribunes. And the tribunes actually get the power to veto certain laws that are passed by the Senate that they um, deem harmful to the plebeians. So over time, the plebes, the middle class, the non-landowners gain some authority and some rights, but most of the rights in ancient Rome are held by the landowners and the wealthy. So uh, in this next slide, we're going to talk about how Rome's political system evolved, how its armies expanded Roman power into the eastern Mediterranean, and once they conquered the Italian peninsula, the Mediterranean peninsula, um, this area of the Mediterranean, they came into contact with the Carthage people on the north coast of Africa. And they fought three Punic Wars with the people in Carthage, and the Romans win every time. So with these battles, the Romans established themselves as the masters of the western Mediterranean, uh, and they've got a huge empire now, and this huge empire, the, the sheer size of it, creates problems for the Romans. Um, the big issue is who should hold the power, the Senate, or the popular political leaders, the war leaders, the generals, that are looking to enact reforms that will be more fair to them. And what happens is soon Ro Rome becomes uh, occupied in a civil war. So there's a man named Tiberius, he and his brother, they bring up these uh, social reforms to kind of reduce the power of the wealthy, um, but they are actually killed, attacked and killed by hired goons from the Senate. And this is what starts the Civil War, and during the Civil War, Julius Caesar seizes control, and then later he's betrayed and killed by the people in um, the Senate and his descendant, his uh, Augustus Caesar, is named the first em emperor. Um, and then Augustus Caesar oversees what is called the Pax Romana, which is like a 200 year, 200 years of peace, right? And during this time of peace, uh, the Roman Empire brings peace, order, unity, and prosperity to all the lands that it rules. Trade flows freely to and from distant lands in Africa and Asia. Merchants carry ivory, gold, spices, silk, and other trade goods. And as people are traveling and trading, they begin to spread ideas. 
Um, and we're going to talk about the specific ideas right now. Uh, the biggest, uh, I guess, beneficiary we have from the Roman Empire is the concept of written laws. And this great legacy of Rome, the establishment of justice through the law, through written law in the 1400s BC, the Emperor Justinian, who you can see in this picture here, um, he's from what's called now the Eastern Byzantine Empire. Well, he reforms, he rewrites the Roman law code. And later on, this code actually influences the Christian church and uh, the medieval monarchs throughout the Middle Ages. So, you know, you got a lot going on here. You got Julius Caesar, who really takes Rome from civil war and seizes control, and he's kind of harsh and draconian, and he, he keeps the Senate, and he keeps other features of the Republic, but essentially he forces the Senate to make him a dictator, and because the Senate senators become jealous and they're fearful of his power, Caesar's enemies stab him to death. That's where you get the Shakespearean saying, et tu brute. Uh, and then, like I said before, Caesar's grandnephew, Octavius, becomes the new ruler, and the Senate gives Octavius the title Augustus Caesar, and he becomes the first Roman emperor. So, let's talk about what's known as the Greco-Roman civilization. Um, Cicero is a Stoic philosopher who challenges the emperor, and... The Stoics believe that uh, the sense of duty, this sense of duty is more important to um, loyalty to the state. Duty to other people is more important than loyalty to the state. And Caesar actually goes ahead and forgives Cicero for saying these things that are against him. And he credits Cicero saying, it's more glorious to enlarge the mind than to enlarge the boundaries of Roman rule. And uh, Rome it kind of takes a lot of uh, cultures and really blends them. They take all these Greek, Hellenistic, and Roman achievements, and they sort of mix them all up and say, this is us, this is our culture. So what happens now as we study the Roman culture is we realize it, it really borrows heavily from the Greeks, it uses a lot of Greek gods and Greek philosophy. Um, the Christian church, which is influenced by the Romans, uh, actually goes and preserves Roman teachings. Again, the official language is Latin, and the church keeps Latin alive because only the priests could speak it, only the priests could read it uh, when they're teaching the Bible. Uh, and believe it or not, also Muslim scholars during the Byzantine Empire uh, value the wisdom in the Roman laws. They also appreciate Roman philosophy and the contributions that the Romans make to math and science. So two very different groups value the Romans and keep these laws together, this, this body of work together, as the Middle Ages come and war kind of rages everywhere. So the next slide I'm going to have you look at some review questions that you can answer in your binder. Why did the Romans set up a republic? How did Roman expansion in the Mediterranean affect Rome? Identify two effects of Roman rule under the empire. Which Roman ruler forced the Senate to name him dictator? And what do you think the word commodities means in the context of this lecture? Okay, sorry about that. I am back. Uh, all right, so you're going to answer these questions in your binder. And then the last slide I want to talk about is your homework assignment this week. Uh, you are going to go to this beautiful place. This is the National Archaeological Museum of Athens. Uh, and while you are on this virtual field trip and you are looking through all of the exhibits there, I particularly want you to visit the classical Hellenistic and Roman periods on their website. And I want you to look at the sculpture sections. And then I want you to find and describe six sculptures, six pieces, that connect with what we have learned in class. These can be people. These can be the Greek philosophers. 
if you recognize a name and you think I've learned about that in class, you can find them in the book, uh, find them mentioned on these videos, and then your job is going to be to post a little description with on Edmodo with links to the six pieces and I want you to send it only to me, Dr. Petrie, not the whole class. So if you want the 10 points for homework this week, you have until Friday to send me six pieces from the National Archaeological Museum of Athens, Greece, fine sculptures that represent some of the people we've talked about and share them with me. Thank you very much for listening. Have a great week. I look forward to seeing you in class.